right, we're going to look at rendering two different cameras at the same time and in the same scene. And uh, we're going to look at it a, a few different ways. I need to explain what I've got set up here first, though. I've got a, um, a little industrial futuristic setting with a car. Uh, the car's on a platform, and I've put some animations in here already with the car and with a few of the cameras. So let's look at some of those animations. So the first one I've got is with camera one. The car starts at the lower level of the scene. We can see the car here. And we're looking through in this lower right hand viewport, we're looking through camera one. So as we progress through the frames, the car is going to be raised by the platform and the camera follows it until frame 80. At frame 80 is when it stops rising. I have another target camera above the car and it is set on a path constraint on this circle right here. Now currently I've just dragged the path constraint onto this shape, so it starts with fr uh, frame zero. We actually want the rotation to start at frame 80 when the, when the rest of these animations stop. So the way we're going to do that is I click on the camera, I take the keyframe at zero, and I'm going to drag it to frame 80. So there's no animation on this top camera. This is the target camera. There's no animation from 0 to 80. Now, if we scrub this, we can see this camera is not moving in anywhere. The bottom camera that's following the car up is still coming up with the car. And what we're going to do is we want it to render camera number 1 from frame 0 to frame 80. And then we want to switch to camera 2's view. At frame 80 so that we can see. This pan around the car up here. So the first tool we're going to look at is in the rendering toolbar and we're going to look at batch renderer. Now from this window we can control a lot of things about the render. Um, obviously we can set the start and stop frames. We can set the width and the height of our render. Our pixel aspect we can set a name and the output path for the renderer. Um, we can also add what we're going to render up here. And this is what we're going to focus on with this one. So the first thing we're going to do is click Add. And we can see here that we can set the viewport. And it gives us a couple of different options down here. So the name of it is Viewport01. Under camera is whatever is in the viewport. So right now we have camera two in the viewport. We're going to click on this right here, camera, and we're going to switch that to camera one. And we can see it switch right up here. And we can set the output path. So I'm going to set that real quick. OK, I've set that to be called test one, and I've set it as an A. VI file. Now under the range, we're going to set that to start at zero and we're going to end that at 80 because this is our camera one. We're going to leave our width and height the same. We can see the resolution 640 by 480 and we'll leave our pixel aspect the same as well. Now we don't have any scene states set up, 
or preset set up. Uh, if they had those set up, they would be down here in the Dropbox. So we're going to leave those alone as well. Now, we can add another view. So we have view 01 here. We can add a second view, and we can select camera 2 for that view. I'm going to go set that output path again. And I've set that to test2.avi. It's an AVI file. Again, the range we need to set. And on that one, we'll set that from 80 to 200. And we'll leave everything else the same. So what this will do is this will render camera 1. It will save it as test1 as an AVI file. It will only render 0 through 80 on the frames. It will create another file called test2. It will start at frame 80 and go to frame 200. So we'll end up with two different files. Another way to do this, so we'll close all of that out. I'm going to delete these. Another way to do it is to come up to rendering, the rendering toolbar again, and click on video post. Now, this window, we can do a lot of things in 3D Max, so we'll cover all of those in a separate tutorial. For this tutorial, we're going to focus just on the two cameras. So to use this, we're going to come up here to Add Scene Event. We're going to select our camera one. We're going to label it so that we know what it is. Now from here, we can change a lot of settings. One setting we are going to change under Render Setup is we're going to come up here and click this force two-sided so that we actually get all of the sides of the polys when we render this out. But in here, we, we can change a number of things for our render. Okay, the next thing we want to change here is the video post parameters. We want, this is camera one, so we want this to render to frame 80, and we'll leave everything else the way it is. So now we have one event here. We'll select off of camera one, and our icon comes back. We're going to title this one camera two. We'll select camera two. And we'll change our BP start time to 80 and our end time to 200. And again, with our render setup, we're going to do a force two sided to make sure we get everything we need in the scene. So now we need to tell Max where we want to save this and how we want to save it. So we need to add another event. We're going to come back up to our icons here, and we're going to add image output event. We're going to name this. And I'm going to go ahead and set up where we want it to save to. So I'm going to click Files. And I saved it as CAR1 as an AVI. And I'm going to label it here as well, just so I know what that is. We're going to go from 0 to 200 on this, and we're going to click OK. Now from here, we need to execute our sequence. So this little icon here that looks like a guy running. We want to make sure we have a range from 0 to 200, our full range. We can here again set up our output, and then we're going to click Render. Now this error here, what we need to do to fix this is I need to turn on Camera 1. So here I have our orthographic 
drawing still up here. So I'm going to change this from front to camera one. So we have camera one here, we have camera two here. We'll come back up to our execute sequence and we'll click render. And we can see that's rendering out. I'll pause the video and we'll come back when it finishes rendering. And now that it's done rendering, this is the results. And again, this we did without having to put video together. It rendered both cameras at the same time.